for the first, we got x squared minus 25. We need to see, is it factorable? And so in this kind of a case, in order for us to be able to factor it, we would have to multiply to negative 25, but add to the middle term, the one that has the x on it. But there is none, which means that you're adding to 0. So are there two numbers that add to 0 but multiply to a negative 25? Yes. And so that first one factors into x minus 5 times x plus 5. For the second one, x squared plus 49. When doing that one, we need to see are there two numbers again that add to 0 but multiply to 49. Well, to get 49, we're thinking 7 and 7 probably. Uh, could I do 7 and negative 7 here? No. no, because that would multiply to a negative 49, not a positive there. So that one wouldn't quite work out. Okay, what about then the next thing that normally comes up then is negative 7 and negative 7? Because that multiplies to 49. But it adds to negative 14, yeah, not 0. In fact, the only way to add to 0 is two numbers that are opposites of each other. So, for instance, up here we had a negative 5 and a positive 5. Same number, but one positive, one negative. That's the only way you're going to be able to add to 0 with two numbers like that. Well, if you're multiplying a positive and a negative, you'll always get a negative, not a positive. Hence, we can know that this one is not factorable. All right, next up is x squared minus 1. This one sometimes can be a little bit tricky for us. Is it factorable? Yes. yes. Because, first of all, notice it's subtraction. And when we don't have that x term, we need to be subtracting it. So that's looking good so far. And so then we're looking to see, are there two numbers that add to 0 but multiply to a negative 1? And yes, 1 times 1 is 1. So you can make it minus 1 and plus 1, and that'll work. All right, for the next one, x squared minus 8. Uh, we do have x squared minus a number, so it's looking good. Okay, so what would our two numbers be that multiply to negative 8? Yeah, that's where we run into problems, right? Because the only way that I can actually have it add to 0 is if they're both the same, 1 plus and 1 minus, of course. But... The only way that I could get the numbers is by square rooting 8. And there is no square root of 8. There is no number that times itself equals 8. Unless you want to get into like root 8 or something like that. But no, we don't need to get into that. When factoring, just stick to the integer values. So you don't need to go into radicals, fractions, or decimals when factoring like that. And so then for this case, we would just say it's not factorable. And then for the last one... Is the last one factorable? No. No. Again, that plus being in there throws everything off. So on this one, the first thing we do is we multiply the first two set of parentheses together. Again, it doesn't have to be the first two, but because nothing makes us choose anything different, so most of us will default to that. We multiply the x plus 4 times the x minus 3, simplify that, and then once we get to this point, then I'm going to multiply that trinomial by the binomial there, just like we were doing last week. And so when all is said and done on that one, after you multiply it out, combine the like terms, you get x cubed minus 13x plus 12. Notice there's no x squared term because it just happened to cancel out here. Obviously, that can happen, but doesn't always happen. And then continue on with numbers 2, 3, and 4 from there. And so for doing number 2, we go back to multiplying everything in the first parentheses by everything in the second parentheses. And so we get x to the fourth minus 7x squared plus 5x squared minus 35. And then we com combine like terms. And notice we do have a couple like terms here that we can combine, the x squareds. And so you end up with the final answer of x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 35.
and we repeat that same process for 3 and 4 as well. Now as you take a look at these answers for these last three especially though, notice how, where the numbers in our answer are coming from. Hopefully this is going to help us see some patterns. Because, like a number 2 up here, the negative 2 and the minus 35, see how they connect to the original numbers in our binomials up there? Notice 5 plus negative 7, negative 2. 5 times negative 7 is the negative 35. So our two numbers, they added to the middle number and multiplied to the last number. Is the same thing true in number 3? Negative 9 and negative 2, do they add to our middle number? Multiply to our last number? Yes. So when, they, when both sets of parentheses start with x squared, we can conclude that that pattern is holding up. Uh, what about when the parentheses start with x to the fifth instead in each binomial? The 3 and the 4, does that add to our middle number? Yes. And does it multiply to our last number? Yes. And so that same pattern is holding up no matter what those first terms are. The key though is that actually that both of these binomials are starting with the x to the same power. So we saw that this pattern of add to multiply to works when it starts with x's, when both start with x squared, or when both start with x to the fifth like this. The key is that both x's are the same. If they were different then all of a sudden all bets are off, it's a different kind of system. But at least for this pattern, it gives us some tools and some patterns that we can recognize and use. Especially because you'll notice that if each parenthesis starts with x to the fifth, notice the exponents on the x's that we end up with. We end up with x to the tenth and x to the fifth over here. And that same kind of pattern is going to hold true because notice, in order to get this x to the tenth, I did the original exponent times two. And that's the kind of pattern that would hold up for all of we're going to be able to use that to factor these three. So, go ahead and write down these three problems, and then we'll see how we'll approach them. And so to factor these, we're going to be following the same kind of patterns of what we've seen with quadratics, right? Because we saw that this middle number should come from adding the two numbers in the binomials. And this number at the end, the one that has no x's on it, that should come from multiplying those same two numbers. In fact, we can formalize this into notes. I would call this optional notes, though. So if you want to write these down to your notes, you can, but you don't need to. And basically what these notes are telling us is that if we have a setup that meets these particular requirements, in other words, this exponent in the first term is double the exponent in the middle term and the last term has no x's in it. So when you have something that fits that particular pattern, yes, you can at least potentially factor it into a pair of binomials like that. So if I then go back and apply this to number 5 here, so I have x to the 4th plus 8x squared plus 15. I'm going to create two new parentheses, and each of those parentheses should start with x to the power of whatever that middle power is. So both parentheses start here with x squared. Then it's just a matter of the easy part, the stuff that we're already familiar with, which is seeing what two numbers add to the middle number and multiply to the last number. Obviously, the add to 8 multiply to 15. That's got to be 3 and 5. So we end up with x squared plus 3 and x squared plus 5. Number 6, same basic pattern here. So notice... We have x to the power of 6, x to the power of 3, the 3 is half of the first one, and then no x's, so it fits the pattern. Each of our binomials here start with x cubed. It's always the same as whatever that middle exponent is, or half of the first one if you prefer, because of course that relationship has to be there. And then it's a matter of figuring out what are the two numbers that add to negative 2 and multiply to negative 35. And, of course, that's going to be negative 7 and 5. So there's our factored form.
And so for number 7, both parentheses start with x squared. Two numbers that add to negative 14 multiplied to 45 are negative 5 and negative 9. But this problem now gives us a new little wrinkle. Because you'll notice here, as you take a look at these two parentheses, x squared minus 5, okay, there's not much we can do with that. But x squared minus 9, you notice that's factorable. Remember where we started class, what's factorable and what isn't? It's because you're actually going to be able to use that at this point in this kind of a factoring process. Because we end up with a lot of binomials that start with x squared in this process. And we need to know if it's factorable from there. Remember, in order for it to be factorable, we have to be subtracting a perfect square. This was not factorable over here because, of course, the 5 is not a perfect square. These weren't factorable up here because they weren't subtracting, things like that. But this one is, and so since it actually is factorable, we're going to factor it. And so I'm going to break that x squared minus 9 into two sets of parentheses. Remember, I say what two numbers multiply, well, by themselves to get us 9. And so you end up with this as your factored form. x squared minus 5 stays there, but then it's times x minus 3 times x plus 3. This would then be considered the final answer. Because when we say factor, we really mean factor completely. Factor as far down as it will go. And this is then completely factored. So for those of you who did choose to write down the notes, you might want to add this at last little bit of a reminder to those notes for yourself, that after you factor it down into something that looks like this, we then check to see if those binomials will factor any further. Then I want you to practice these on your own. So here's two last problems for us to do together. Do it on your own first, and then We'll check through it together to make sure that you got the idea down. So for number 8 here, uh, we start with x to the 6th, then we go x cubed, then there's no x. So yes, we can potentially at least factor it into x cubed and x cubed. We know both parentheses must start with x cubed. That's the only way this works. That's because this is a 6 and this is a 3. That first one must always be double, the middle one. All right, then I'm looking for two numbers that add to negative 23, multiply to negative 50. There is such a pair, yes. Ends up being a minus and a plus. It's negative 25 and a positive 2. And then we need to look at that answer and see, does it factor further? And this one can be kind of tricky. It gives us a chance to talk about something here. Because that x cubed minus 25... It looks like the ones that we were doing at the start of class that we said could factor, but we run into a little bit of a problem with it when we do so because we might be thinking it becomes x plus 5 times x minus 5. But if we multiply that back out, that gives us x squared minus 25. And this is an x cubed minus 25. The fact that that's a cubed changes things up on us a little bit. And in fact, it does so to the point that that x cubed minus 25 doesn't actually factor at all. So when you have an odd exponent like that in your binomial, it's just not going to go down any further. There are some other rules with even ones that we'll take a look at more in future lessons, but basically it's got to be an even exponent for us to have any chance of breaking it down further. On number 9, we're going to start each parenthesis with x squared because that middle exponent is x squared. And then we're going to add to the middle number, multiply to the last number. And we do find it's x squared minus 4 times x squared minus 1. But then we have to look and see, do either of those factor down even further? The answer is yes. In fact, both of those are going to factor down further. Because to get the negative 4, you can do 2 and negative 2. To get the negative 1, this is actually one we looked at at the start of class, it's 1 and negative 1. And so this would then be considered our final factored form. x minus 2 times x plus 2 times x minus 1 times x plus 1. And yes, as was true with previous factoring we've done, the order of the parentheses does not matter.